you're just going back now? That's true, but... Traveler, Paimon, please wait. He's angry. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end. Even after you learned that I'm a member of the Fatui. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny, this entire time. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then too. That's Alitina, right? The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? Please, Akamio, please. That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering... Would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. Back when our parents first died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. Wait, you two are gay brothers? I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for a time. But I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me, and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. Okay, the standard. The answer he gave me was, she caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no. So he was gonna... <sighs> But wouldn't Fontaine's laws deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care, and they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood, and the knave standing there in the darkness. So, she'd already taken care of that guy. Really? That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Okay, this turned out really quick. Like, wow. If you watch any amount of anime, especially in the last, last year or so, and those cultural anime, oh boy. I'm actually surprised they actually got this sneak in detail. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. 
The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. Yep, I bet that she is. She has her own plans. I hope so. She has gained permission from the Sarita to first use the Gnosis's power once she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. To save? So, she believes in that prophecy too? Oh, uh, but I can always see the crane, the crane of Alicino has other plans with it. That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us House members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. Oof, imagine her ending if she's gonna be the one that's gonna get slash into to turn into water water to us orphans the only connection we have left to this world apart from our family is our homeland so from small deeds like distributing magic pockets to huge schemes like stealing a gnosis everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy it's all right i understand the only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions, and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. Why do I feel that so like? Oh boy, that was something. Hey there. What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? Were you looking for us, Navia? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? Besides, are you sure we're the ones who can crack a case that's been cold for decades now? And given that there's new evidence from the trial, there should be a trail of breadcrumbs for the Hydro Archon's people to follow now, right? Huh. I see. Well, I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine, after all. Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire. Causing new hope to spring forth, and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? Huh? Do we really need to get that formal? Uh, well, guess you really did treat us as partners, huh? Well, i just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way, there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. You don't have to twist my arm's arm if Boss Navi is treating. Can't play mine in! 
Oh, wonderful. In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. All right, then. Let's have our farewell meal. And I bet that the another cutscene is gone. Wait, it's over? Wait, it's over? No, I still continue. But man, I'm tired. And I feel the next cutscene is gonna happen. Maybe. Welcome back to maybe a new episode or maybe a next segment. And man, this game just keeps me annoying. Or else the lighting every time. This wine Shut up, Johnny. Every time I try to license this game, always has some kind of major issue. How in the world do you mute my mic? And then I have to deal with the graphics for some reason because I have to reset all it. Now it's all fine now. But at the last, today we're gonna continue with the story. Hmm. I came here several times with my father when I was little, but stopped eating here as often after growing up. I hope the food here will be to your taste. Hotel like this in a while. <laughs> Paimon's getting excited already. Huh, in that case, I'll go order for us first. Please wait here a moment. Ooh, everything looks so good. People in Fontaine sure know how to enjoy life. Why, of course. Go ahead, try whatever you like. If the food's good, I'll make a group reservation for the rest of Spina di Rosula next time. And if it's not? Well, uh, <laughs> then I'll still bring everyone. Albeit with only one dish per table. You, uh, sure have your own way of doing things. Oh, we called this a farewell meal, but we could also treat it like a victory feast, right? We did just win that case after all. Oh, true. Very true. In that case, boss, we'll have another two dishes. Huh? Paimon didn't mean that you had to order even more food. <laughs> Speaking of cases, do you think that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances will get caught soon now that this has all happened? Well, we've certainly taken a big step forward. But I feel that's about it. We know that there's an organization that means to dissolve these young women, but we still don't know what they are really after. If it hadn't happened right in front of us, Kaimon wouldn't have ever believed that a person could be dissolved like that. <laughs> right? Yet it was because this was such a preposterous notion that the investigation could never really move forward before. Ugh. If only that guy could have finished speaking! We were so close to hearing who was behind it. Definitely. I bet you definitely. In such investigations, even the smallest step can seem like a yawning chasm if the trail of clues is cut off. To be honest, I don't have high hopes for any follow-up that the authorities might conduct. It's not that I don't have faith in their ability, it's just that a different perspective is required in some matters. It's easy to guard against and deceive a single, narrow perspective. A shift in thinking is required at such times in order to produce a breakthrough. Which is exactly why the Spina di Rosula exists. Those highfalutin folk are not all-knowing. That's why we exist. To seep into the cracks where filth falls through. Where their watch fails them. That's the kind of problems we solve. Hmm... Seems Paimon thought things were simpler than they actually are. <sighs> it's all right. Well, <laughs> this was supposed to be a farewell meal, so I doubt you have further interest in this business, right? Let's talk about something else. Like, uh, what are your future plans? true. We didn't have a chance to speak to her after the trial ended. It 
didn't really seem like the right time or place to do it anyway. Hmm. I see. So, your primary objective, which has been foiled so far, was to have a chat with the Hydro Archon. I've heard that there's a long line of people waiting to meet Lady Farina. I suspect you'll be waiting for quite a while, considering that you missed your chance today. Yeah, we've heard that she's super popular here in Fontaine, and that it'll be tough getting any of her time. Hmm. Well, would you consider some more, uh, unique ways? Perhaps even methods of, uh, let's say, questionable legality? Guess that's Bina Di Rosula's boss for you. Chock full of sketchy ideas. Well, what did you have in mind? Well, one way would be to infiltrate a performance troupe at the Opera House, only to abandon your act at the play's climax and ask to speak to her after the performance. I'm sure Lady Farina would be eager to see the ending, and would agree in order to finish watching the play, don't you think? Uh, could you suggest something a little more practical? This plan seems pretty hard to pull off. We'd have to go learn how to act, and acting's really hard. Really? This way you're gonna be blameful because we ruin and help her act? Can we just go and meet? Come on. Our reputations are supposed to do something, no? And I guess we have to delete anything else but the logical one. <sighs> Alright, here's another. Find a way to conceal yourselves under her bed. Then, wake her up in the dead of night and demand answers. Don't let her go back to sleep until she answers all your questions. That is an even better idea. I can personally testify that this one works. When I'm sleepy, I'll do anything as long as I can finally get some sleep. Uh, that might work, but that's not really the problem. The problem is we don't want to get ourselves arrested. Ah, valid point. I overlooked that part. I was just thinking about leveraging a person's desire for sleep. <laughs> all right, all right, no more joking around. Huh, perhaps you could... Oh, I don't know. Cut the line when she's on a break. You did defeat her in court, clearing citizens of hers from false accusations. False accusations she had nearly upheld personally. I imagine that she feels quite ashamed about the whole thing. You mean that if we catch her while she's on a break, she might be too embarrassed to refuse? Oh, that does make some sense. Why don't we give it a try after this meal? You know, strike while the iron is hot and all. Huh? Paimon, did you drink my Fanta? Uh, the what? Was this your drink? <laughs> Sorry about that. Paimon wasn't really paying attention and the cup was right next to Paimon. Would you like to order another? No, it's fine. We're just about done here. Alright! Honestly, Paimon wouldn't recommend Fanta anyway. It tastes kind of salty and icky. Is that supposed to be Fanta? Is that so? Huh. Well, in that case, we'll have to blacklist the Fanta here then. Huh? If we're all finished eating, then I'll go pay. Yeah, we're stuffed. Thanks for the treat, Navia. Now we're catching his coming. Maybe. Oh, so full. Paimon can barely float anymore. Nah, that would be so... normal. You know, like you. Hmm. Okay. As for expenses this month, we're left with... Oh, don't tell me huh. she's a uh, heavy... Spend it and she has to have a fixed budget to say. But man, I didn't want to see Paimon times to watch at least once. Hey, Navia, what are you doing over there? Oh, nothing, nothing. It was just a meal, you know? Nothing the Spina di Rosula can't cover. Ha! <sighs> <sighs> Let's get ready to try to meet the Hydro Archon.
down again. Bye, Navia! <sighs> so this is goodbye, huh? Well, if you do encounter any other trouble in Fontaine, you're always welcome to contact the Spina di Rosula. I'll give your requests the highest priority. Ah, uh, in any case, I wish you smooth sailing. I'll see you again, partner. See ya! We cannot just rely on the ocean. There aren't many people around anymore. Looks like that boat we took to Araneus might have been the last one. Vache. Hmm. Looks like we're back here again. Huh? Traveler? Are you hearing voices again? I'm really not sure what to make out this voice here. What do that mean? I really have to look up that. Spooky? Are you sure we don't want to come back in the morning? Vache? Vache? Who's Vache? Oh, hey, why are you still walking towards it? There might be something nasty in the water. Huh? Hang on. Paimon can kind of hear a voice. It's calling for Vache, right? Hey. Traveler? Stop walking! Come on, wake up! <sighs> Vache, are you... my dear Vache? No, wait. You seem to be someone else. Do you know, Vache? Do you know where my love is? I'm... Wait... Who am I? I'm very sorry, I fear I do not know. My memories feel like they have been washed away like a flood. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide, never to be recovered. How much have I lost? How many things that I once held dear while on land have I since forgotten? Yes, that is what I was once. But now, I am but the consciousness of one who has lost their form. I do not know how I came to be like this either. I only vaguely remember being covered in light blue water and then all grew dim. <sighs> I also remember going to many places. I loved adventure, loved exploring places of peril. And no matter where I went, Vache would go with me. I knew how dearly he loved me. And I also loved him equally as much. But now, we can no longer go back. The pain of such parting. I never knew how heavy it could be. No. Our reunion no longer has any meaning. There is no way for us to create any new memories. The thought of me gives him no succor. So let it lie forgotten beneath the waters. If you meet Vache, tell him not to look for me. Tell him to move on. That is the only thing I still remember. Perhaps that is so, as I was submerged in the waters, losing consciousness. I saw Vache above the surface. His eyes were filled with such sorrow, such longing. If only I could have comforted him, told him that I did not suffer. Indeed, I had felt a great warmth. Is that what you call it? Dissolving? If anything, 
I consider it a form of release. What you call it? Dissolving. If anything, I consider it a form of release. Release? It was a state of neither fear nor frenzy, with only an endless peace, like the water still surface. I could also liken it to being a thirsty person who drinks water for the first time. And only then sees how they have lived for so long in a world of endless want and anxiety. I think I hear your companion. It's time for you to go, I think. Farewell, then. I am glad that you were able to sense my presence. Remember, if you see Vashe, Tell him not to seek me out any longer. <laughs> <laughs>